Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how I paint High Fleet Behemoth. Just want to start this video by saying a huge thank you to everybody that went and checked out my last video. Under In under 24 hours it became my most popular video I've ever put out and we actually crossed the 50 subscriber mark after that video was released. So thank you for everyone who's liked, commented and shared and subscribed. Um, glad to have you here. High Fleet Behemoth is one of the most popular High Fleets the Games Workshop has created and it's where the character Tyranid Old One Eye originates from. Their main colour scheme is red, blue and black and in this video I'm going to show you how to do that while supplying a bit of visual interest that can be then used on whatever High Fleet you wish. I personally think that most of the high fleets the Games Workshop have come up with in recent years have been way too plain. It's just flat colours on the canvas. But what I'm going to do is apply a nice simple pattern. That's what you're going to be learning today, to apply a simple, easy pattern to your high fleets. I mean, what happens to all the old high fleets? When you look back at the old codexes, they've got some really cool patterns on their carapaces. Even it's used to have a bit of visual flair, but now I feel that they're a bit too flat. Which is why I tend to apply a certain pattern or very contrasting colours uh, to the carapaces that I do for these tuners. So, without further ado, let's get on with the video. In this video, I'm going to be painting up my hive guard models, which I find white to begin with. The first thing I want to tackle is that carapace. And as I said a moment ago, I'm going to be doing a pattern on the carapace. For that, we're going to want three colours. Black, grey and white. Specific paint names really don't matter at this stage. Just black, grey, white will do. At one edge of each carapace plate, I'm going to do a line of black. I want this to take up around 20% of that individual plate. Then just next to that, I'm going to do a line of grey, around the same amount. Try not to have these lines be completely straight. We want a bit of wobbliness to add some visual interest. Along the edges of the grey area, you want to apply some dots that invade both the white and the black segments. Try to make them irregular so it looks more natural. The closer the dots are to the original colour, the more condensed the dots should be. This will create a smoother transition between the colours. Once you've done a number of dots that you are happy with, go ahead and do the same thing with the black area. Make sure to add some of these black dots way out in the white area to keep things a bit more spaced out and interesting. Then lastly we're going to add some white dots in the grey and black areas. The whole thing can be a bit tedious but I think it yields great results. It's worth noting you can be as messy or as tidy as you want with this process. Whatever you would do, you would give your nids a unique flavour. And also you don't even have to do dots, you could do it in tiny triangles or octagons or love hearts. Do whatever you want. Now I know it seems a bit weird that we just did all this grey and black and white considering it's meant to be a blue carapace, but trust me, we're about to change that. So what I'm going to do now is apply a blue wash over everything that we just did. In this example I'm using Drakenhof Nightshade. Doing this will tint everything we just did and make it all various shades of blue. Now, we're going to have to set that one aside for half an hour or so to dry, but lucky for you, here's one I prepared earlier. We're going to move on to the skin now. To keep it nice and easy, I'm just going to be slapping on some Blood Angels red contrast paint where it is needed. If you don't have contrast paints, a red of your choice will work just fine. I would suggest either Mephiston or Corn Red. Now let's move on to the main reason everybody's painting up Hive Guard units, and that's that beautiful gun. Now I'm not going to go with a normal High Fleet Behemoth scheme of painting the guns like the rest of this model. No, I want them to stand out and that is why I'm going to be painting them orange and pink. The main body of the gun, where it attaches to the model's forearm, will be painted in Jakero Orange. I'm then going to paint the barrel of the gun with Pink Horror. Whilst I have the pink out, I'm also going to go ahead and paint all the little exposed muscle areas on the skin. It's important to keep the paint nice and thin as there are a lot of details in these areas and you don't want those little creases being clogged up with paint. 
Once that's done, I'm going to apply a red wash over all the skin and gun areas. I'm going to be using Caraborg Crimson. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. Once that's dried, I'm going to apply a final base coat, which is going to be the black on all of the hoofs and claw areas. To highlight the orange area on the gun, I mix Flash Gets Yellow with the original orange and then go over most of the surface, making sure to leave the recesses. I then finish that area off with some select highlights of straight Flash Gets Yellow on the very tippy toppy areas. I do a similar thing on the gun barrel and expose muscle by mixing the original pink with the white paint instead. To highlight the skin, I'm going to use Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm making sure to only apply it to the upper facing areas and not to get too close to the recessed areas as we don't want to have wasted the application of the wash. I'm going to leave the skin there, but you could easily take it further by mixing orange into the red and highlighting upwards from there. For those lovely teeth, I'm going to base them in Steel Legion Drab, followed by a highlight of a Shabti Bone and then a final highlight of Screaming Skull. Super simple, but also quite effective in my opinion. We're getting really close to being finished now, and this last highlight is really going to make the carapace pop. Did you hear that? That was, that was a pretty cool popping noise. Pop. I chose to use a white paint and do an edge highlight on all the carapace pieces. Tyranids are great for learning to edge highlight because they have so many well-defined sharp edges. An easy way to apply an edge highlight is to run the side of the brush along the edge of whatever surface you are painting. That is the main way I highlight this model. Also, you want to go ahead and apply a small grey highlight to the claws and the hoofs, the black areas we painted earlier. Unfortunately, I'm an imbecile and didn't film that bit. The finishing touch of this model is a little eye on the gun, or whatever the hell that little ball thing is. I simply paint it black, apply a couple layers of grey that take up less space each time, and then finally add a tiny highlight in the form of a dot of white. With that done, I think these Hive Guard are just about ready to hide away in a corner and blast away your enemies from afar. So that's it, that's how I paint my High Fleet Behemoth. And remember, this easy technique can be used on whatever high fleet you want in terms of creating that pattern. Just use the corresponding colours for your chosen high fleet. If you want to see more Tyranid videos, I'm going to leave some cards in the end of the video so you can go and check those out. Also, if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, it really helps. Also, subscribing to the channel would be awesome so that you don't miss any future videos. And a comment down below on whatever the hell you like, but maybe more video suggestions because I'm really enjoying this. Well, that's all for me. So until next time, I will see you later.